welcome. Uh, this is our fourth night of 10 days of spiritual food. And for the benefit of my friends that are on Facebook, my name is Ann Powell, I'm one of the elders here at the church. And last evening, uh, the third night of our meeting, our pastor was the one that delivered the message. And his message was the original and the pattern. And the, mes the message that I will be bringing tonight is if you love me, keep my commandment. Now, what I would like for you to do on Facebook is to like us and then share us. Like us, hit that like button, and then share us. Call some friends, invite some people over uh, to, to enjoy the sermon with you, to watch the sermon, to listen to the sermon, but to come and to, to fellowship with you. I also would like for you to have your Bibles. Uh, we're going to look at several scriptures tonight. And if you have your Bibles, I would like for you to follow along because I want you to read for yourself what thus says the Lord. And if you have paper and pencil, write down the, uh, the scripture that I'm going to give you. But for the benefit of those that are here, I left uh, a copy of all of the, uh, the, the scriptures that I'm using for tonight in tonight's sermon. So for my friends that are out on Facebook, it's out there in Facebook land, if you get your Bible paper and pencil, and we will go to work. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for the messages that we've heard. And I thank you for the speakers that have come forth with their message. And Lord, as we look at uh, the commandments tonight, there's so many people out there that are confused about whether the laws were done away with, whether or not they were nailed to the cross. And some just don't know. So we are asking in the name of Jesus that your Holy Spirit would clear up those confusions that individuals may have and that they will come to a clear understanding of what you are saying in your word because we know that the God that you were yesterday, the God that you are today, the God that you will be tomorrow, you never change. So we thank you for your mercy and your grace. We invite the presence to be here in our midst and to go forth out in Facebook land. These things we ask in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Have you ever heard people say that the, the, the laws were nailed to the cross and that they were done away with? Well, we know that's not true. And I'm gonna show you that it's not true. Uh, if you have your Bibles, if you will go with me to Malachi 3 and 6. And it says here, in Malachi 3 and 6, Malachi 3 and 6. And I will give you time uh, with each scripture that I call out, I will give you time to find those scriptures. Malachi, Malachi 3 and 6 says, For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. Now, go with me to Hebrew 13 and 8. Hebrew 13 and 8. And here, it says here that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's right, Lawson. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So whatever he said in his word, whatever his laws are in his word, are still binding today. But we see that God's laws are eternal and that they are un unchangeable. God's law exemplifies his character. It tells us who he is. It's like looking in a mirror. It shows us where we are out of harmony with him. And like Paul, like John said in the, uh, the book of Revelation, he pictured God's last day people are those that keep the commandment of Jesus Christ. Keep the commandment of Jesus Christ. Or keep the commandment of God and have the faith of Jesus. And as we look at the principle of God's law, we want to learn that we want to learn more about the commandments. So we want to focus on the relationship 
with God, and we want to refer, uh, focus on the relationship that we are to have with one another. So if you have your Bibles, which I know you do, go with me to Exodus chapter 20, and we're going to start at verse 3. Exodus chapter 20, and we're going to start at 3, verse 3. You have it? Amen. If you have it, say amen. 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 Okay. All right. In verse 3, it says, Thou shall not have no other God before me. Thou shall not make unto me any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water underneath. That uh, that commandment deals with loyalty, loyalty to God. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, upon the third and fourth generations of them that hate me. This deals with reverence. We are not to serve any other God but the living God. Amen. And then it says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Thou shalt not take the Lord, thou shalt not take his name in vain. That is reverence. And then there's the one that deals with holy time. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Okay? Now, when we look at uh, when we look at the six, when we look at the, the other six, that deals with the relationship, how we are to react, how we are to relate to one another. Thou shalt honor thy mother and thy father, thy father and thy mother, that the days upon the land will be long upon the Lord, which thy God giveth thee. This deals with respect, authority, parental, civil, and spiritual. That's what that commandment deals with. Thou shalt not kill. That one deals with the respect for life. Thou shalt not commit adultery. That deals with the purity of heart. Thou shalt not steal. That deals with honesty. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbors. That deals with truthfulness. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, nor thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. That deals with contentment. We are to be contented with whatever we have. But Christians today, they believe in most of these principles. But what I would like to do is focus on that one that the world seems to have forgotten. And that one deals with holy time. The appointed time that we are to have each and every week to meet with our Father. Only a holy God can make holy time. So let us look at the Bible and let us see what it says about uh, holy time. Starting at the beginning of time. Let's go to Genesis 2, 1 through 3. Genesis 2 and we're going to look at verses 1 through 3. And it says here that thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the hosts in them of them and on the seventh day God ended his work from which he had made and he rested on the seventh day from all of the work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day, and he sanctified it, because in it he rested from all of his work which he had made, which he had created, and God had made. Now, I want you to notice that after the crowning act of creation, did you notice that God set a day aside for rest? After all that he had done during the six days, he set aside one day for rest, and he blessed that day, and he sanctified it, and he hollered it. And God now set, up, uh, set apart the seventh day of the week so that Adam and Eve could worship him on the seventh day. They could come apart from all of the work that they had done all week and worship him. And this was before sin entered the world. Well, some would say that the, seventh, uh, that the fourth commandment was done, uh, it was created, that God gave the fourth commandment at Mount Sinai. Well, there's a couple of scriptures that tells us differently. 
If you will look at Genesis 26 and 5, Genesis 26 and 5, there's two passages here that I want to bring out. And it says here that because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statute, and my law, more than 300 years before the commandment was written on a tablet of stone at Mount Sinai, the Bible said that Abraham obeyed. Amen. That's what he said. Abraham obeyed, and he obeyed his voice, God's voice, and he kept his charges, his commandment, his statute, and his laws. Now let's look at another example of how God expects his people to keep his commandment, and this was still before they were written on the stones of tablet, the tablets of stone, I'm sorry. God led the children of Israel out of Egypt. He led them through the Red Sea into the wilderness. And as they crossed the wilderness, God supplied their every need, giving them water to drink every day. And he gave them a portion of bread. Exodus 16, 4 and 5 tells us what instruction he gave to Moses. Let's look at Exodus 16, verses 4 and 5. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Okay? Now, I want you to notice that the Ten Commandments still have not been given uh, at Mount Sinai as of yet. We'll see that later on. But God is calling the people into accountability. He is calling them to be loyal. He is calling you and I to be loyal to his day, the day that he set aside, the day that he sanctified, the day that he made holy. Amen? Amen. <laughs> After 400 years of bondage, in Egypt, they needed to be reminded of the importance of keeping the Sabbath. They had forgotten, you see. The Ten Commandments still had not started at Mount Sinai. They had been a part of God's character. It's who God is. It was his character. It was part of the government that uh, in heaven. And the war that started in heaven was brought to earth. And it was all because Satan made a decision not to follow God's law. And after being in the wilderness, and after being uh, released from Egypt, God had to bring them to this point where they would actually remember to keep the Sabbath. He was trying to remind them. He told them that the day, on the sixth day, that they were to prepare, get twice as much bread, twice as much manna, and then on the seventh day, you're to worship him. You're to come aside and you're to worship him. And we see in uh, Exodus 16 and 15, it says here, And when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, It's manna. For they wist not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. And if we look at verse 25 to 30 in the same chapter, And Moses said, Eat that today, for today is the Sabbath unto the Lord. Today you shall not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it. But on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, there will be none. There will be none. But And it came to pass that there were not some of the people on the seventh day together, and they found none. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long? How long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my law? You see, for the Lord had given the Sabbath, therefore they had had six days to gather a mount for two days. There was no reason for them to go out on the Sabbath. They were disobedience to God's law. So we see that God gave them bread for two days for the Sabbath. And he's teaching them to prepare, and we are to do the same thing when it comes to uh, the preparation day. We are to make preparation for the Sabbath. That's pre by preparing all your meals, taking care of all of the, uh, the necessities around your house, 
Whatever you have to do, put all work aside, and when sunset come, then we go into the Sabbath. We go into that holy time to spend with the Lord. Amen. We're here, as usual, some didn't believe. They went out on the Sabbath to gather food, but they didn't find any. And the Lord said to Moses, how long, how long, Moses, you refuse to keep my commandments and my law? Which law? Which law? The Ten Commandments had not been given, uh, had not been given to them yet. It had not been written on the stones of tablet. Tablet, I'm sorry. God couldn't expect them to do something that they did not know anything about. So, how how did they know? Where did they know? When did they know? The law was given to Adam and Eve, and it was passed down from generation to generation. That's how Abraham knew because he obeyed. He kept the Sabbath. That's how Abraham knew. Now, let's look at Exodus 20, verses 8 through 11. Let's look at that. Now, most of the people here know, uh, most of the people here, and I'm talking to my uh, friends out on Facebook, most of the people here know this commandment. But for a lot of the world, they overlook this particular commandment. They know thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, honor thy father and thy mother. They know all of those commandments, but they seem to not remember or to set this one aside. So let's look and see what the Lord is saying here. He says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall I labor and do all of thy work. But the seventh day, the seventh day, is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy sons, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy strangers that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all them that and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. One day, one day that God asked us to remember and most of the world has forgotten. God says, do all of your work you have all week to do everything that you need to do. But on the seventh day, that is my day, that is the Lord's day. But some would say, the seventh-day Sabbath was made for the Jews. Some would say that. So I ask you, thou shalt not commit adultery. Was that for the Jews? Thou shalt not steal. Was that for the Jews? Of course not. We can't pick what we want. Either we accept the whole law or we accept none. It's not a multiple choice. If you will go with me to Deuteronomy 5 and 29. Deuteronomy 5 and 29. And it says here that, oh, that there was such an heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that it may be well with them and their children forever. And here God is asking to fear him. Now, he's not saying be afraid of him. He is saying reverence me, respect me. And he's also asking us, asking you, asking me to keep all how many? All of the commandments. And he's saying, and we are to keep all of them always. Not just sometimes, but always. God didn't change his mind. He didn't do that. After all, in Ecclesiastes 3.14, Solomon tells us that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it. Nothing can be taken from it. Amen. So now let's point our attention to Jesus Christ. Let's see what day did he worship on. Go with me to Luke 4 and 16. Luke 4 and 16. And here it reads, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath, and he stood up to read. Most of us know this particular scripture. The Bible says that his custom was to go into the synagogue or to go to church on the Sabbath day. Now, we know that a custom is something that you regularly do. It's a habit. It's something that you do often. It's a part of who you are. 
And Jesus made it very clear here that he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day uh, as his custom was. Now, did he go on the Sabbath day to be saved? No, no. It was the will of his father who is in heaven. And as our example, he would keep the whole law. And that's what we are to do, keep the whole law. And as a matter of fact, John tells us in John 14 and 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. And we say that we love Jesus, don't we? Amen. We say that. But we don't keep the commandments that he asked us to do. And it's very simple. It's very simple. All we have to do is open our hearts and give our life to him. And he will make it, make the way for us. <laughs> Now, let's look at John 20, uh, I'm sorry, Luke 23 and 54, and then uh, chapter 24 and 3. Because some would say, how can you really know what day is the Sabbath? And I've had some people to tell me that, that I was talking to about the Sabbath. Well, how do you really know what day was the Sabbath? Back in biblical time, it wasn't Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days. That's what it was. So how do you really know which day is the Sabbath? Well, Luke, Luke tells us, Luke tells us, and that day was the preparation, and the Sabbath drew on. And the women also which came with him from Galilee followed after, and beheld the sceptical, and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointment, and rested on the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulchral, bringing all the spices which they had prepared and a certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away uh, from the sepulchre. And they entered in and they found not the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I want you to notice the sequence here. The preparation day is the sixth day, which we know it to be Friday. The Sabbath is the seventh day, which we know to be Saturday. The first day, the first day of the week, which we know to be Sunday. Regardless to what denomination you're in, what faith you believe in, most all of the Christian world know that Jesus Christ rose the first day of the week. Regardless of what Christian, what, 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 what denomination you're in, we know that Jesus Christ rose on the first day of the week, and we know that to be Sunday as of today, right? We also know that from Exodus 16, that the preparation day was the sixth day, which is the day that Jesus died. And our calendar point to that as Good Friday. Amen? Amen. It points to that as Good Friday. So because, uh, and that was because he died on the cross that day. So this passage of scripture points out that the Sabbath is between Friday and Sunday. Very clear. Very clear. We all know when Good Friday was, when Good Friday is. We know when he rose on the first day of the week, and we know that he rested in the tomb on the seventh day. And, 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 and the Sabbath is between the Good Friday and that first day of the week. Look at Genesis 1 and 5. Genesis 1 and 5. And it says here, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning was the first day. Now, there's two key points here. The Sabbath is not just one or two hours that you spend in church. The Sabbath is a total of 24 hours, and it starts at sunset Friday evening, and it goes to sunset Saturday evening or Sabbath evening. At creation, God established, he created two parts of day, night and day. We had darkness before we had day. <laughs> okay? Out of 140 languages in this world, out of 140 languages, the seventh day is referred to as the Sabbath. You hear me? Do you all hear me? Out of 140 languages in this world, the seventh day is referred to as the Sabbath. Now, you may say, I understand, Sister Elder, that they kept the Sabbath in the Old Testament, 
and, 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 and they worship the seven days, uh, they worship every Sabbath. They, I understand that. But Christians today honor his resurrection on the first day of the week, which is the Lord's day. That's what they say. So my question that I ask you is where in the Bible do you find that? Where in the Bible do you find that? Well, some may say that John was in uh, the spirit on the Lord's day. Well, let's look at Revelations 1 and 10. Revelations 1 and 10. And John is speaking here. And he says that I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as a trumpet. But there's two things that I want to point out to you here. Does this text alone tell us which day the Lord day is? No, it does not. Does it tell us that there is a Lord's day? Yes, yes it does. All right, Mark, Mark 2, 27 and 28. Go to Mark 2, 27 and 28. And he said unto them, the Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Well, therefore, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Now here Jesus point back to the creation week and at the end uh, and ended with the Sabbath, the seventh day created for man to always remember him as the creator God. Therefore, the Sabbath is not only a memorial of creation, but it points to our creator. Okay? It, it points to our creator, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So now let's look at Exodus 20 and 8 uh, through 11 again. Let's look at that one again. And I want to go with that one again because I don't want you to forget it. Remember. It starts off with remember. Now, out of all of the commandments, they start off with thou. Thou shall not. Thou shall not. Thou shall not. And in the middle of the ten, we have the one that starts off with remember. I wonder why that is. I wonder why that happened. I wonder why God wrote it that way, Pastor. It says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall I labor and do all of thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, not thy sons, nor thy daughter, nor thy maid servant, nor thy maid servants, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all them that is in them. And rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Now, what does this mean? This means that I come aside on the I come aside at sunset on the seventh day. But it also means that for my children and the people that live in my house, they come aside as well. It also means that if I have servants that work for me, they do not work on that particular day. And it also means that if I own a farm, if I own cattle, if I own a large, you know, large cattle, I don't work them on the Sabbath. It also means that if anything should take place in my home, if anything should break down, I don't hire anybody to come in. That's that stranger that is within my gates. And as I said, in the heart of God's commandments, the fourth commandment is there, and it starts off with remember. The seventh day Sabbath is the Lord thy God. We find the Lord himself says that the seventh day Sabbath is the Lord's day. It's his day. It's the day that he set. It's the day that he sanctified. It's the day that he made holy. For in six days the Lord created, he made heaven and earth, the sea and everything that is in it. And he rested on the seventh day. And once again, this brings us back to creation. It brings us back to creation. We look at him as our creator. It's a memorial. It's a memorial day that we are to reflect back on the creator, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Some would say that the, the Sabbath is not even mentioned in the New Testament. So you don't have to keep it, church. You don't have to keep it. Facebook fan, but stop and think for a moment. If Jesus, if Jesus himself had changed the day of worship, the seventh day Sabbath, to the first day of the week, don't you know 
that that would have been the biggest news in the New Testament? That would have been the biggest news in the New Testament. We find that Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Peter, and Paul, they were all Sabbath keepers. They were all Sabbath keepers. This would have been one of the most important discussions, topics, in, uh, in, in, in the four Gospels. It would have been from Matthews to Revelation. But because of the fact that it was not changed, he did not change it, he has not changed it, and he will not change it, it's not there. Amen. It is not there. The seventh day Sabbath is the day that God set for us and nothing else. The first day of the week, that's the day that you choose. And I, um, I didn't always know this. I, I didn't always have this information. I grew up a primitive Baptist. That's the way I grew up. I depended on the pastor telling me what was in the Bible. The scripture tells us to search the scripture for ourselves, to study, to show ourselves approved. That's what it tells us. So when I heard this, I questioned the leadership of my then church. I questioned the leadership because I wanted to know because the pastor cannot die for me. He cannot die for me. I have to die for myself. And I want to be saved in God's kingdom. What about you? Amen. Amen. So when I questioned the leadership, I was told, you preach, I preach, he said, what the people want to hear. Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. I preach what the people want to hear. And we have so many churches that are giving these soft, soaking sermon. The Bible says the truth hurts. It's like a two-edged sword. It hurts going in, and it hurts coming out. And if he's not stepping on your toes, something is wrong. Yep. Because we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Hebrew 4 tells us, uh, Hebrew 4, 10 through 11. If you would go with me there. And we're going to see the Apostle Paul, what he was warning others about the Sabbath. We're going to see what he had to say. That's Hebrew 4, 10 through 11. And it says, for he that enter into his rest. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own work, as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. He referred to it as that rest, lest any man fall as the example of unbelief. Now, what is he talking about here? Paul stopped to warn them that we are to to worship, we are to, uh, to, to worship God on the seventh day Sabbath. It's the day that, uh, he, uh, he, that he appointed. And it points back to creation. He's, and it started with Adam, no, it started here with Adam and Eve, but it was already in the God's government in heaven. Amen. He then shares the example of the children of Israel. If you remember, when they were in the wilderness, they went out to collect manna on the Sabbath day, and they didn't find any. And Paul says to them, in this particular scripture, let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same examples of unbelief. And because they did not believe, they went out on the Sabbath to look for manna, to pick manna, to gather manna, and it was none. There was none. That rest, he said, is just not a day that you choose. It's the day that God has chosen for us, the seventh day Sabbath. Now, you might say, but did Jesus and the disciples change the day of worship from the seventh day to the first? Jesus tells us in John 14 and 15, if you love me, if you love me, keep my commandments. He is calling his people. He's calling you and I. He's calling all of us. He's calling anyone who is listening to keep all of his commandment forever. And he asked us to keep all of his commandments always. As Jesus was looking almost 40 years into the future when Jerusalem would be destroyed. 
Y'all have read about that. He warned us in Matthew 24 and 20. And he said, but pray that your flight will not be in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Jerusalem was destroyed in 40, I'm sorry, in 70 AD, almost 40 years after Jesus Christ had died and gone to heaven. And he's still talking about the Sabbath. So that tells me that the Sabbath day had not changed. It's simple. He did not change it. The book of Acts tells us that after he was resurrected, Jesus spent 40 days with his disciples. 40 days. That's five weekends. That's five Sabbaths. Isn't that right? 40 days. That he would have had the opportunity to tell them then that the Sabbath had been changed. But the Sabbath had not been changed. In Acts 13, 14, and 15, if you would go with me there, let's see what Paul has to say about that as well. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch and Poseidon, and they went into the synagogue on the Sabbath, and they sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophet, and the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brothers, if you have any words of exhortation for the people, say on. Two, three key points here. Fifteen years after Jesus went back to heaven, Paul was still going to church on the Sabbath. Okay? He wasn't there to preach. He was there to worship. And it wasn't until the leaders asked him, saying, if you have any words of exhortations, say on. So uh, some would say that Paul only went to the, uh, he only went to church on the Sabbath to reach the Jews. But the scripture tells us totally different. In Acts 13, 42 and 44, it says that, and when the Jews, the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them on the next Sabbath. The Gentiles, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached on the next Sabbath. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and the religious prototype followed upon uh, Paul and Barnabas, who was asking them and persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath day came, almost the entire city came out to hear the word of God. You hear me? So it was his custom to go to, uh, to go to church to worship on the Sabbath. Paul, as we know it, was given as an evangelist to the Gentiles first, right? right. And then Paul was leaving the church, and the Gentile asked him that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Why didn't the Gentiles ask him to preach to them the next day? Because they knew that Paul was a Sabbath keeper. So he asked them to come back the next Sabbath. And the whole city, just about the whole city came out. Jews and Gentiles, they worshiped together. And in Acts 17 and 2, it tells us, and Paul, as his manner was, he went unto them three Sabbath days, reasoned with them out of the scripture, as his manner was. As his manner was. 20 years after Christ had been crucified, resurrected, gone back to heaven, Paul, as his manner was, went to them three Sabbath days and reasoned with them from the scripture. And we find in Acts 18, 4 and verse 11, and he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greek, the Greeks, and verse 11, and he continued there for a year and six months, a year and a half, teaching the word of God among them. Amen. What an evangelist. Amen. Paul persuaded the Jews and the Greeks every Sabbath. 25 years after Jesus went back to heaven, Paul continued in his work, preaching every Sabbath for a year and a half. Now, let's look at the everlasting gospel. A message for God's people who are living in the end time, which are now the time that we're living in. Revelations 14, 6 through 7. Most of us know this as what? The third angel's message. Yes, of course. The third angel's message. And it reads here, And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven 
having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell upon the earth and to, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God, give, him glo give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the foundation of the waters. And here in these verses, you see again, the fourth commandment is right there. It's right there. The last day message for God's people is given to everyone, not just to the Jews. It's given to the entire world. We are to fear God. We are to give reverence to God. We are to give respect to him. We are to give glory to God. We do this with our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. What does your lifestyle say for you? When people see you, who do they know you as? What do they know you as? Do they know you as a Christian or do they know you as a devil? How do they know you? What type of witness does your lifestyle say? He is speaking to us to be loyal. He is calling for us to be loyal saints. That's what Jesus is calling for. Do our lives, do your lives show the evidence of that? Are we sons and daughters of God? Amen. Are we surrendering our will to the Father? Worship him that made. Worship him that created. To honor God is to worship him on his memorial day that he set up to remind us of his creation. Amen. And I don't know how, I don't know how any other way to say this. That is why John said, and he wrote in the book of Revelation, declared that God's last day people will be God's keeping, God's commandment keeping people, the fourth commandment, the 10 commandment, all of the commandments, and that one that most of the world has forgotten. Revelations 14 and 12 says, here are they that keep the commandment of God and have the faith of Jesus. Revelations 12, 17 say, which keep the commandment of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelations 22 and 14, blessed are they that do, that do, that do, that do his commandment. Amen. That's a verb showing action, that do his commandment. Now, one of the most exciting things about the Sabbath is it doesn't end here. And you ought to be saying, praise God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. It does not end here on earth. We will be keeping the Sabbath throughout eternity. Amen. In Isaiah 66, 22 and 23. Isaiah 66, 22 and 23. And this is my last scripture. And it says, for as the new heaven and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come together to worship me, says the Lord. Amen. And we ought to say amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. When the earth here is destroyed, Jesus will make a new earth. And the Bible says, from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come and worship before me, says the Lord. That means throughout eternity, it will never end. It will keep going on and on and on, forever and ever. We will come together, brothers and sisters, all kindreds of nations and tribes and tongues will come together to, uh, to worship the creator, uh, Christ. How exciting, how exciting can that be? The Lord wants us to be with him. He wants to save you. He wants to save all of us. But some of us don't want to be saved. Some of us just don't want to be saved. So I speak to you out there. If you've heard anything that was new to you and that you don't understand, we have a Facebook uh, email address. We have an email address that's listed on Facebook. 
and their pastor, Pastor David Mason. His email address is also on Facebook. Email or text your questions. Or send your questions on Facebook. Uh, and let us know. Let us hear from you. If there's anything that in any of these sermons that you don't understand, make contact with us. Our phone number is also there as well. Again, uh, the email address is on our Facebook page, and the pastor, who is David May uh, Mason, his email address is also on the Facebook page. But as you can see, church family, Facebook family, the Seventh-day Sabbath is from Sunset Friday to Sunset Saturday. Amen. And even though most of the world worship on a different day, do you want to make a decision today? I made that decision when I found the truth. When I found the truth, when I read it, when I understood it, and when I saw what thus said the Lord, I had a decision to make. You've heard this. You have a decision to make. And I pray that you will make it in time and that you will not tarry because tomorrow is not promised to us. He set aside a day of worship, and that day is the seventh day Sabbath. Second Timothy 2 and 15 say, make every effort to present yourself approved to God. Study, I admonish you to study, to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Study, pick up the Bible. If you don't understand it, please make contact with us and we will answer your questions. And if we don't have the answer right then, I promise you, we will get back to you. Remember again to like us and to share us on Facebook. Let us pray. Loving Father, I know this might have been difficult for some who have heard this. It might have been the first time that they have ever heard it. And out of, tradi out of tradition, some may have been going to church on the first day because mom and dad and, and granddad and uncle and aunt went to church on the first day. But now you have heard the truth. You have a decision to make. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would touch the heart because I know that you are standing at the door knocking. It is up to us, it's up to the individual to open the heart and to let him in. Lord, send your spirit. Answer our prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.